STEM to Center Media. We are a digital music distribution and financial tools company uh, based in Los Angeles. Um, we primarily work with independent artists and labels to uh, provide them with the right tools to build sustainable businesses. Um, our ethos is very much about disrupting some of the uh, traditional um, power structures in the music industry uh, to benefit artists and help artists retain ownership of their intellectual property and also make sure that they can um, pay their collaborators and get access to capital with uh, financial terms that are friendly to them. Um, we are a 30 person company. Most of us are in LA. We've gone fully remote because of the pandemic. Um, I've been an HR leader for two years, so I'm kind of newly minted in a lot of ways. So some of my perspective um, is very much influenced by working for a really small company that is that knows each other pretty well um, and is you know part of the the creative industry, but kind of where it meets technology. So we're kind of like part tech company, part entertainment company, um, and a lot of uh, a lot of what I've been doing with ERGs is really new to me and also new to our company and most of our staff. Um, so my perspective is kind of as a newbie that is very enthusiastic about what we're doing and has had pretty good results so far, I think. So um, I'm excited to be here and totally like open to questions and I'm excited to hear what the rest of the panelists have to say to and learn from you guys as well. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Zoe. Uh, Jake, maybe we'll go to you next. Sure. Thank you, Cole. Um, and hi, everybody. My name is Jake Liu. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Outer. Uh, we are a Santa Monica-based uh, direct-to-consumer outdoor furniture company. Uh, we're on a mission to inspire happier, healthier, and more fulfilling lives uh, through innovative outdoor furniture and lifestyle products. We've been around for three years, um, so relatively new company. Um, you know, since then, you know, we are, we raised a couple rounds of funding. Uh, we were featured on Shark Tank last year. We were rated as the fastest growing DTC brand in America earlier this year. And, uh, you know, we are, we grew our team from about 10 to 23 people here in the last four months or so. Um, you know, out of the 23 people, um, a lot of us are in, in LA. Uh, it's a pretty distributed team. Um, you know, nine of us are, minority including my, myself uh, we're definitely minority owned business uh, 10 are uh, women uh, so we have a very diverse group here uh, at outer um, you know i am actually thinking a lot about as we enter the next stage of growth which for us is uh, series a to series b um, you know how do we actually empower our employees to do better so you know some of the things that we are doing as a brand is that we are very mission oriented and driven around sustainability. So we're part of the 1% for the planet, uh, where we donated 1% of all of our revenue towards uh, sustainable, uh, you know, uh, basically organizations and eco-friendly, uh, uh, you know, uh, organizations. And uh, yeah, just like Zoe, I'm here to, to learn from the other panelists and to absorb as much as possible. Thank you, Jake, I appreciate it. Yeah. Now we'll, now we'll go to Carrie. Hi, my name is Carrie Frelick. Uh, I'm actually uh, a test engineering manager at Blackline. Uh, I've also helped the company build and design the diversity internship program that we started a couple of years ago. Um, and we are partnering with LA Tech uh, as part of trying to um, increase the um, amount of uh, underrepresented um, groups that are in the tech space. So we've been making a lot of, um, uh, having a lot of traction in that area. Uh, and also uh, we've been making a lot of moves in the ERG space as well at our company. So Blackline actually does a lot of financial accounting automation. I mean, we have a whole range of products, uh, but we are a worldwide company. We have co customers around the globe. And we also, uh, our, our CEO, Therese Tucker has been uh, recognized as one of the preeminent women in the tech space. And uh, she has done quite a lot to drive uh, inclusion and diversity and uh, equality, not just within our company, but around uh, with all of the customers that we serve. Um, one of the 
primary benefits of our product lines are to help people have work-life balance, which is an impactful area with not just our customers, but their families and their families um, who may be in different situations as well. So it's, uh, we really look at having an impact in as many ways we can into the lives of everyone. And so it's been a really important subject, not just to our CEO, but to our company as a whole to make sure that we are um, advocating for inclusion and diversity amongst ourselves in our tech space, um, as well as in the world as a whole. So uh, we're really excited to be part of this panel. Yeah, and we're really excited to have you. And so a big thanks to our three panelists. Um, as we said at the beginning, they really represent an, an awesome slice of the Los Angeles tech, tech scene, to be sure, but also different kinds of organizations, different sizes of organizations, different stages of organizations. Um, and so again, while, while the term ERG might be new to some people, and we hope actually that it is to, to encourage learning and, and talking of these best practices, I think the concept is pretty universal. Um, and, and everyone here cares deeply about their people, about how to best advance them and manage them. And so um, I guess with that, we'll just kind of, we'll go right into some of the questions that we had prepared. And again, to our audience, um, if you do have any questions that you'd like to answer, that you'd like to have addressed, please feel free to use either the chat or the Q&A uh, uh, buttons on the bottom, and we will be sure to integrate those into our conversation. Um, so I'm just going to start with our first section, which is kind of focused on the basics, right? What is an ERG? How have you built or interacted with them in the past? Um, we have some follow-ups, but maybe we'll just start with you, Carrie, if you don't mind just giving us a little overview of what an ERG is to you slash in your experience and how you've gone about interacting with them and building them um, throughout your career. So for us, uh, we started, we actually did a pilot program first um, in our company uh, with our women's ERG and we named it Brew, Black Line Resources for Empowering Women. Uh, and we actually had like, quite a lot of fun with that because all of the founding members uh, loved tea. So we uh, kind of did a theme high tea uh, on a quarterly basis when we, when we launched um, and kind of made that our, our kind of a, our, um, kind of founding marketing uh, tactic, but for what does it mean for me and how do we get into it? Just real quickly, it was kind of uh, thrown out there by our CEO who just grouped in a few people on the email thread to say, hey, uh, we'd like to start up this employee resource group. Would any of you be willing to, to take the lead on it? And all of us on the email thread were like, well, let's do it together. So. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how it got started. Uh, so it did start from executive sponsorship at the top from the beginning, which I think was very, very significant to have her backing. Uh, and she also made sure that we got a little bit of a budget, which has grown over the years, but just to kind of give us a boost. So we were really lucky in that way. But I think for us, it's kind of taken on different forms over the years for our particular ERG. Our goal has been to really provide, uh, first and foremost, support for employees, a way for them to grow their career, provide maybe some training, some networking, um, but also it's now evolved on into a community outreach as well. So we do a lot with nonprofits. Um, uh, this year we're going to be, uh, we, we've established a yearly program with the Women's Founders Foundation, for example, and doing, maybe we'll host hackathons or panels. So we've established kind of a regular cadence uh, and programming that has both an internal and an external focus. But we do have at Blackline, because the, the uh, brew group went so well, that we have now launched three other ERGs focusing on LGBTQ. Uh, we have one based on the Christian faith, uh, and we have a new one called Complexion that um, is based on our Black employees. So we've, we've are growing, I'm sure there'll be more, but it really has been a success story uh, to varying degrees of uh, people feeling like they belong, people wanting to get involved, um, because a lot of this circles around what can we do as a company, and, and even having the ERGs themselves be inclusive um, and, and have allies and, and making sure that it's still a holistic experience across the board for the whole company. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, I think 
maybe what we could do is pass it to you, Jake, to talk um, about from a, maybe from an angle of being a founder, right? From the startup perspective. And Jake and I met through um, kind of the, the LA Startup Network. Um, wondering if you could just speak to how you've gone about building ERG-esque communities within your team um, and, and what, that, what that looks like from maybe a founder's perspective or a startup perspective. Yeah, I like that term ERG-esque because honestly, before this, I actually did not know, you know, the term ERG, even though we have been practicing a form of it, uh, just unknowingly. Um, so, you know, as a, a startup founder's perspective, uh, from, from my perspective, you know, uh, people is lifeblood of our organization, obviously, and everybody, you know, uh, matters a lot and makes a lot of impact. Um, and so uh, some s concrete examples uh, would be, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we do have nine uh, people, almost 50% of our company uh, is actually minority, right? Um, one example recently um, is, you know, doing the active uh, month of uh, BL BLM uh, movement, um, you know, we actually just uh, self-organized and, you know, aside from just uh, from, from a brand's perspective, you know, making our stands clear and making that, uh, you know, uh, writing some of these initiatives down, including hiring more, um, you know, black employees and uh, also elevating leadership. Uh, VP of engineering, uh, he himself um, is black. Um, and so he actually penned, uh, you know, uh, an article basically around this subject and then really uh, encouraging our team internally to get involved. So. Uh, Concretely, you know, we do have a Slack channel uh, that 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 is named uh, BLM Initiatives, and you know, it's been really active. Uh, you know, how people are actually getting involved, and uh, as a company, you know, we are actually matching 100% to all of donations to any of these charitable causes. Um, and so, that's one example. Um, another example is our uh, VP of Marketing, Karen. She, uh, you know, was definitely the first female executive team. Uh, member uh, of our company and uh, you know it was really early important for me early on to you know have someone uh, kind of at the executive te uh, team table to basically kind of uh, set the, the, the tone for the company that we want more uh, women uh, to join us and so you know to this day you know we have like as I mentioned 10 women again about half of our company is women and she uh, also is uh, the chair for the Elevate LA network, which is a women's uh, empowerment network. Uh, I, I think she used to be. Now, I think she just uh, um, stepped away from that that role. So she was really, um, you know, involved with that. So whatever we can do as a team, as a group, and also as a company to support her, you know, we've been doing that. And so, even though we didn't really, you know, uh, use the term ERG, uh, I feel like we have been doing a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, or you know, initiatives that are, that are specific to that. Um, so, you know, going forward, we definitely, uh, you know, would like to formalize it and, you know, provide more resources to our employees. Uh, we are very self-driven, self, uh, you know, um, and everyone is, you know, we came together about, you know, our own mission of building a better future, you know, through the lens of sustainability and eco-friendliness. But I do think, you know, uh, that kind of benevolence attracts people who value diversity and minority uh, representation, et cetera. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense and, and really appreciate your perspective on that, Jake. Um, Zoe, it's actually a pretty good transition, I think, into um, a, a little follow-up that we wanted to ask around, and as Jake talks about, you know, the, the, the dynamic world of a startup, right? And everyone's a startup at some point, right? Um, and, and as you, you take these benevolent impulses, as Jake put it, of the people, of the community, and then formalize them into ways that are hopefully amplifying rather than stifling, I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit to um, what success looks like for an ERG. Because, um, you know, I would imagine there's some balance between the inevitable need for operationalization, but also the need for flexibility. So I guess what success has looked like um, in ERGs in your experience? Um, and maybe if there's a, an anecdote or two that really come to mind, it'd be awesome to hear. Yeah. So from my perspective, success looks like real empowerment and influence within the organization. So um, an ERG actually having the influence that is uh, recognized by leadership 
to change policy or to, um, to, to get a budget to do something meaningful that is driven by the goals as defined by the ERG. To me, that's what it looks like. Um, and I don't think I even could have articulated that before we, we just started doing it. But now I see, because of a, of a couple of um, uh, situations where that was achieved, that that to me is, is one of the most meaningful ways of measuring success. So um, one example I can think of, this was maybe one of the first um, opportunities that the DEI committee at STEM um, actually sort of wielded their influence was we were interviewing for um, uh, some engineering roles and we had a black candidate that had done very poorly on a particular part of the interview but had done very well on the rest of it and the DEI committee uh, talked to me about this candidate and I was like why don't you um, why don't you draft a proposal for the VP of engineering to redo that part of the interview and come at it from we as the DEI committee think it's important in this case to give this candidate another shot. Um, we think they were nervous. We know there are systemic uh, issues that could lead to certain candidates maybe having less um, you know, uh, preparation or experience with this and we really wanna give this candidate another chance. And so they, uh, I kind of helped them with this email and then they sent it as the committee, not just as an individual, but as the committee saying, we propose that we do this part over, we give this candidate another shot. Um, and it was, this is like a very small like incident, but the VP of engineering was like, I totally hear where you guys are coming from, let's do it. And then I organized it and then, you know, we we went through with it and it was just an example of how when the committee comes together and says we as this this group of at stem would like you know to do this different thing um and then i think it has a different i think as a leader at a company you have to really take that very seriously um so it's like collective organizing almost like not exactly like a union but I kind of looked to unions as a similar model of like empowerment of a group to, you know, bargain for or propose things as a group and therefore need to be taken seriously as a group. Um, so that's that, that's one way I think about like what success looks like is being able to, to wield that influence um, and being recognized and being help, like being supported by HR. Um, and I see myself almost as like a conduit um, for our ERGs to our leadership team and as like a coach sometimes where I'm like, that's a great idea, maybe reword it like this, or um, that's a great proposal, but the, your first line of your statement might make someone feel defensive. So how about, you know, changing it a little bit Yeah. this way? Yeah. No, thank you for that. That makes a lot. Oh, uh, Carrie, did you have something to add? Yes, uh, and I think it's important to note that success will look different and, and what you achieve as an ERG will look different for every company. So some are really focused on maybe an activist, whether it's internal to the company or whether it's with the community. Um, but some ERGs, their purpose is more uh, kind of at the individual level. Uh, for example, uh, our, our Christian group is called Peace and they send out daily devotionals. Um, and it's more to be an ear when someone's having a problem. Do they have someone to talk to? Do they, you know, how do we support each other? Um, with our brew group, it's about careers. It's how do we help other women and support their careers? So we provide seminars and trainings on career and professional and skills. And, um, and we do a lot of those similar activities when we bring in community members. We, we might do uh, how do you market yourself? How do you network? Uh, some of these questions and a lot of networking events um, or charity drives. Uh, so what you're trying to achieve is going to depend on what are the values of your company, what's the culture of your company, and what are the needs of your members and the needs of your company. Um, and, and it can evolve over time as well. So I think that's pretty important to say, if, especially for those who might be starting up an ERG to ask, uh, what is it that we need? What is it that we are wanting to achieve? 
um, and then use that as a framework. So, okay, so how do we use this as a tool, this ERG group as a tool to achieve those ends? That makes sense. And, and maybe just a, a follow up to, to all of you, because um, it, again, coming at different angles, um, wondering, like, I, I hear programs, right? Webinars, um, you know, networking events. Um, certainly, I hear kind of uh, a top down approach, making sure that leadership is on board um, and, and playing a role in advocating and advancing ERGs from that perspective. And I'm sure that there, and certainly there's a bottom up approach. I guess I'm wondering um, the structures in play, be they programmatic or otherwise. Um, that, that you've seen most conducive to ERG success. Um, and I'm sure, and it, it's building blocks, I'm sure, right? It's not just, oh, here's the structure, done. It's more like the structures that build into success in those areas. Um, you know, we'd love to hear more from Carrie, Jake. I'm sure there's a different angle altogether from a startup perspective where things are so fluid. So maybe just one more follow-up to, to all three of you, if you don't mind just reflecting on those structures that our attendees and those that will view this, you know, thereafter, can think about when they're trying to build effective culture and, and community around ERGs within their own organizations. Started with that. So for us, uh, our ERGs uh, selection is, uh, we started out with a small group of engaged um, cross department women uh, for our brew group. And I think it was important that it wasn't made up just from HR members, that there was, we had representation from engineering, which is always a tough department to pull membership from because of, of demands on the engineering team. And we had representation from a few other departments, key apartments, departments as well. We did have uh, partners in HR as well um, who could help us organize training when we wanted to organize training. Um, now that we have the internship program, we pulled in our intern turn coordinator because we can you know, coordinate events that also support other initiatives in the company. And um, so we, we started out with an admin team, but we also started out with the goal that it wasn't going to be an executive admin team. Our primary purpose is to get members to engage, let them step up, let them initiate, um, empower them to initiate or co coach or mentor, or whatever we need to do to support them uh, as our members try to do their own events. And then we do host some events that we plan and we, we initiate, but we always make sure we're pulling ideas from our, member, our members. Uh, for example, our holiday party, we just did a whole brainstorming session. We did an all hands and just opened the floor. And it's like, what do we do for a holiday party? And the ideas that came out were so creative um, and it was really exciting to see. So it, it's good to have, for us, we really needed that kind of central core to keep things moving for the accountability as well but we wanted to make sure that we weren't really the ones that were running the show uh, to the exclusion of other participation. Yeah. Hey, thank you, that makes a lot of sense. Um, maybe Jake, would you wanna to speak to it briefly? Uh, I'm actually writing down notes, uh, you know, as, as this goes on. Um, so it's really great to learn some of these, you know, uh, best practices and tips. Um, you know, we we actually are in the in the middle of transitioning our uh, HR support. Um, you know, as we are uh, going to grow even uh, doubling again from twenty to forty people here in the next six months or so. It is a exciting but also harrowing <laughs> period for for me as a CEO. Uh, you know, at, at that level of growth, especially during this pandemic. You know, when uh, everybody's remote. Um, I haven't met half my team until last Saturday, uh, you know, when we had a offsite team retreat, you know, and with all the social distancing and all of that. So it's been a challenging time to do this. But despite this, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I'm nodding as uh, Kerry was speaking because, you know, we definitely take the, 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 the perspective of empowering, you know, every employee. We're a pretty flat organization. And I, I do think a lot of startups are, are as well. Um, you know, clearly there's a leadership team, but uh, you know, when it comes to uh, team building exercises, when it comes to, uh, you know, initiatives, whether it's social justice or sustainability or minority representation, you know, that's all, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to speak up, including our interns. Um, and so, um, you know, I think from my perspective, it's important to uh, empower them and to encourage it, uh, also make the resources available. Um, so, you know, to that end, we are actually, uh, switching, you know, even our HR practice. I mean, as a startup, scrappy startup, HR is probably the 
last thing you think about. I, I think that is to a detriment to a lot of startups. Um, so we take it pretty seriously early on. We are switching out from kind of like self-service, it's called Gusto, a lot of startups use them, to a more kind of like a full-fledged HR service called Sequoia One. And, you know, we have our own uh, kind of like HR uh, manager as well. Uh, we work with outsourced agency to do that, where employees feel can actually um, talk to, you know, HR as well, instead of just their managers and executive team, uh, you know. So those are some of the concrete steps that we've, we've taken in the last uh, couple of months. That's awesome. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, no, it's a great perspective. Um, really, really interesting. And, and maybe then, Zoe, if you don't mind, just closing us out on this section and then we'll move to the next. Yeah. So our, um, our ERGs really sprang out of our work on um, a day called the show must be paused, which was concurrent. It was the same day as June 2nd, which is blackout Tuesday. Um, the show must be paused in, in particular was created by two black women in the music industry, um, Brianna Aguimang and Jamila Thomas, who um, wanted basically the entire music industry to stop for a day because the show had to be paused because in the wake of, you know, Brianna Taylor's death, George Floyd's death, they felt like, how can we just move forward? We need to stop for a minute and say like, what are we doing to support the black community, black communities at a time like this when many of us who work in music and are black um, or our allies, speaking for myself, um, can, are like, how can I just do, how can I just go about my business in the wake of this, like the context of what's happening in America. And so we as a company felt really strongly we needed to participate in a meaningful way because um, one, we felt it was the right thing to do. And two, our company and the music industry in general wouldn't exist without black art. So it felt particularly important. And I will say to the music industry's credit that most companies did uh, participate, like all the major labels, Universal, Warner, Sony, um, as well as lots of distributors like us and other under other kinds of companies, publishing companies, management companies. Um, so what came out of that was um, creating a DEI committee that I spoke to before and also a, a people of color committee. Um, additionally, th that was actually one of our co commitments that we made as a company. We made five other commitments too, um, which include um, promising to uh, support more black owned businesses uh, as vendors when we need um, office supplies, services, other stuff, um, and also building, giving into our products. Um, it's a whole other story. But the point is that we had all of these commitments suddenly and we had to project manage them. And so we had to start thinking about like, what is the process? Where is the accountability? And that really helped us organize our ERGs because we were talking process, communication, who's gonna own what, what is a like what does success look like with these commitments like and also how do we keep this work that we did on june 2nd going in yeah. perpetuity um so that's that was really the genesis but i think we sort of harnessed the enthusiasm and energy across our company because we're lucky everybody at our company is pretty engaged yeah. and cares about this stuff and i know that's not always the case at bigger companies or at any company it's really you know, unique to the company's culture. Um, but it helped us start having conversations around like, well, who's gonna do the administrative function here? Um, and I think actually sort of getting into like, how do you empower your ERGs without asking them to do too much? Like how can I, as, it's something I think about a lot, like how is how can I as an HR leader take on some of the administrative burden so that our POC committee can focus on the ideas and the like sub, you know, the um, like the really important ideas that our initiatives are going to be based on rather than having to take time away from their own job description at the company um, to like send calendar invites or take notes or these other things that HR can do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that's great. And uh, I'll, I'll hop in, Cole. Um, exactly. So, so just just to that, because one of the things that we hope all of our attendees learn about our, our sessions is that they are they should be um, you should walk away with something. And so even even our panelists. So Zoe, I'll just give you like an idea that just came to mind. Something I've seen work is that for ERG groups and anything that employees start, it's really helpful 
if you take like a board leadership approach, right? So like you have a board and which in this case would be the ERG group itself. And then you have an executive staff or an executive leader staff that actual position. So just, just as you're thinking about it. And so this is something Jake um, that you can think about and Carrie, you can take back to your team as well, is that it empowers the group if they know that the roles have kind of been reversed, that leadership is actually the one that is the secretary or making sure that they follow up or send those notes out because then it's like, oh, wow, there's just a different level of investment uh, that comes to that. And so, uh, you know, I want to uh, build off something that you just mentioned, uh, Zoe and Carrie, and it, it will tie in the question um, that Audrey has just asked and just her question and, and we'll, uh, we'll just do it live, is that um, she wants to know, like, what are any, like, tips on starting ERGs, just like some, and if we can kind of keep them, like, really practical uh, around, like, if I'm an employee, what's the first thing that I, I do? Who do I go talk to? How large can the groups be? And then we'll just go from there. Uh, and, and Zoe and Carrie, if you, you'd love to start, that'd be really amazing. Um, just sort of spitballing here because, uh, again, ours started really organically. We were lucky. Uh, we had sort of a catalyst that led to it. But if I were going to do that, I would start by having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that I would expect would will probably want to be in that ERG and make sure that I knew that I had like a base of interest. And then I would probably go talk to a leader at the company and say, look, I have a, a group of people that are all really excited to do this. And we want to know, like, do we have your support to kick it off? Um, that might be one way that I would just get it, get it started. But start with like being able to speak confidently that you have the interest because that's already persuasive, right? Like how could a leader say no when a bunch of people have already been talking about it? You're on mute, Carrie. Thank you. <laughs> um, that can, it can take different forms for the next approach because I think it also depends on, um, I, I do think it will depend on what kind of network you already have established in your company. And I think if you haven't established a network and you're trying to start an ERG, then that would be the first place you actually just start. So a little bit of what Zoe was saying is go reach out to people, but also, make sure you understand who the other, who your teammates and who your membership is going to be. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting. It could even be a pulse meeting where maybe you have some like, you know, coffee and cookies or in a virtual environment, maybe you do like a, like a little virtual fun event and say, um, Hey, this is, you know, we're starting, we're interested in starting up this group. Um, anyone interested, let's just get together and let's brainstorm, you know, what, like, what we want this group to be. Uh, it will take a little bit of engagement from anyone who's starting an ERG. It does take a little bit of time. Um, it is much better if you have a, a peer or a friend or a partner that you can start it with because you can bounce ideas off of each other. If one is busy with a project, the other one can kind of pick up. Uh, it does take quite a lot of effort to start up, um, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, if it's a communication standpoint where you just, you say, let's have pulse meetings. Let's just maybe have an accountability partner. Let's just start there. And we'll just say, hey, everyone, you get a partner and let's just have conversations. And then maybe we'll do like, you know, switch accountability partners next week. And then we get to know each other and we kind of build a community. Um, once you establish a community, uh, it becomes a lot easier and you can formalize uh, the ERG that way. So it, it, there are growing pains uh, and there's going to be people who want to attend events but don't want to engage and that should be okay. But it is also important to identify who will be your engaged people. These are the people who you're going to lean on when you, know, when you need someone to step up to the plate or when you need ideas. Uh, but you also need to make sure that the ones who aren't engaged that it might be because they're introverts. And so you have a secondary um, methodology of garnering, whether it's through an anonymous survey um, or, you know, just send me an email that, that you're just inviting ideas from, from uh, 
these other members. But also at the same time, from the bottom up, it is important to have that network from the base. Uh, and then it's important to talk to people's managers, talk to the managers in engineering, talk to the managers in HR and any other legal and any other department where your membership might be coming from. Um, and identify, are they supportive of this initiative? Would they support someone taking 30 minutes of their time to attend a social event or a company event? Um, and HR can really help with that. So it is important to have, an, uh, it, even though you want your team members to, and your membership to be across departments, it is important to have an HR person who can support the initiative. And then if you're lucky enough to have an executive that you have access to, because access to executives isn't always there, you have to recognize that. But if you are lucky enough to have an executive that you have access to, or a VP, or even a director who might have that access, that's where, again, your network might come into play. Maybe you don't have the access, but someone in your network does. Um, use that network. Try to get, um, as Tyler was saying, maybe try to get uh, an executive sponsor. Get someone who can advocate for you at the highest levels, who can advise you in, you know, especially if we're dealing with sensitive subject matter, that we're making sure that we're not stepping out of bounds, that we're making sure we're, you know, checking all our legal boxes. Um, and it, because it, they're, does need to be sometimes careful conversations and people want to be really open, but other people aren't comfortable with that conversation and we wanna be sensitive to all differing and opposing points of view. So um, it's just, I think the foundation of everything comes down to not just driving forward a project, but getting to know the people that you serve. Carrie, that, that was amazing. Uh, so many, so many points to that I just, I wish we had like a button to just like plus one, plus one. Um, but I think we should take advantage of the opportunity uh, to build off of that because we do have a CEO here. And so Jake, I, I wanna pose a question to you um, because, you know, as Carrie mentioned and, and Zoe also, you know, oftentimes or sometimes you don't get to maybe talk to the top leader. And so, you know, you're in an organization where you know, you're growing and hopefully, you know, you get to a place where you need hundreds, if not thousands of employees, that would be huge for you um, and the city. You know, how would you like to be approached um, if let's say someone in, that's attending or, or views this later as an employee, as a CEO, what would be the approach that you would take understanding that all CEOs are different, but knowing your, your peer group, your peers, what would that approach look like and, and what would the employee need to present to you um, for you to be to to buy into the initiative for a ERG? Yeah, thank you for the question, uh, Tyler. And I also wish that will you know, become hundreds and not thousands of employees. Um, you know, I think there, just pertaining to Audrey's question, too, I think my, that's exactly our stage, right? 23 employees, so not too different from 25. My, the, the immediate thought that jumped uh, at me is that, um, you know, at this stage, uh, the CEO should be very, uh, I mean, first of all, you, you should probably know uh, the CEO, uh, you know, uh, on a personal basis, right? You're not so large at the point where you don't have access to uh, your CEO. Um, you know, to me, just speaking from my perspective uh, directly, even though you know uh, my day to days can be very busy with you know balancing all the initiatives and priorities, but my priority number one is to make sure that my team is happy, right? Like, how do I make sure that the voices are heard? How do I actually empower, um, you know, um, whatever initiatives that that my my any of my team members want to uh, uh, embark upon, whether it's uh, whether it's ERG or initiative otherwise? Um, I think you know, from a CEO's perspective, you know, I think every, every CEO knows this, which, you know, they have three primary um, goals at, at a startup um, and even large organizations. One is to make sure that the organization doesn't run out of money so that the organization can keep going. So fundraising, right? The second one is, um, uh, the other two actually people related, right? Hiring, how do, how do you actually make sure that you have the right culture to attract the right kind of talent? And so this is part of that this is a very important part of that you want to build a culture that you can keep uh, you know attracting and retaining top talent and so making programs like ERGs you know available and uh, encouraged is actually really important it's actually a differentiator you know from other organizations 
And the last one is really just managing people's happiness and empowering employees, right? And so um, chances are, I, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I like to go out on a limb and guess that your CEO is likely going to be very um, uh, welcoming and, you know, uh, want to hear your, what, what you want to do. And you, you, you probably get a sponsorship from him, him or her directly. Um, things that could really make it a lot simpler, maybe come up with like a uh, agenda or like a, like an email, right? That's my style, right? If we can, somebody can bring it up in like a very easily digestible format, you know, I, I come into times when I really want to do something, but I really want a, a kind of like an action plan. So I can basically say, okay, let's do this. Or what's the ask of me, right? What's the budget that you, you, you want, or, you know, what, what's timeline, what is a kind of like a breakout of that? Again, it doesn't have to be like a full-fledged business proposal, but just a few points to kind of like center the conversation around, hey, can I grab 30 minutes of time? Let's have a conversation about this. Those could really help, uh, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I want to like strongly second what you said, Jake. I really loved that about um, as a CEO, your job is to attract and retain the right talent. And I think that there's an easy story to tell um, if you are trying to start ERGs at your company that um, a, you know, we all know the, the science shows that diversity and in, equity and inclusion are not only right, they are good for business. Businesses make more money, they're more innovative when they have diverse and inclusive uh, teams. And so um, having ERGs has been defined by a lot of leaders in the DEI space as a really important part of that. So if you're making a case to uh, an executive for why you should have ERGs, I think that's a really easy really easy to connect those dots that ultimately it can help um, a company retain and, and attract like the best talent. So I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, and, and, and this is great. And I know we're, we're getting close to time. Uh, if you haven't had lunch yet, I hope you're eating or, or drinking water or we'll do it after the panel, like our, I'm sure our panelists will. Um, but I, I would love if we could just go um, and we can do uh, Carrie, um, Zoe, Jake, um, if you could leave the, our attendees and, you know, anyone who views this webinar with just, they may still be like on the fence, they, they are really passionate about it, ERG, um, just some encouragement or any like advice that you want to give to someone who's like, I think I want to do this, um, that would be great. And then, and then we'll close out um, our panel today. I'm gonna take a, a quick detour on that conversation uh, and perspective. Um, so it depends on your personality style. Um, there's people who really live to serve. And if you live to serve, then the reward of this is going to be so um, expansive. Um, where it grows, even if you can only dedicate your first year to it and you have to hand it off to someone or group or so, you know, for the future, just to see something that you've developed grow is fantastic. But from a personal perspective, uh, it actually also is a great resume builder. Um, and it seems to be disconnected. I know I've heard from different activities I've done, it's not your job. And I said, well, it will be. <laughs> um, in some ways, shape or form, I mean, diversity is everybody's job. Um, but at the same time, it is a leadership effort. And it uses a heck of a lot of skills in different areas. And this is why you need a team. You need people who are really good at communication and people who are really good at thinking about, you know, the, the impacts and someone who's really good at just driving something forward and someone who's good at thinking about what's the budget, you know, what are, what are the details? So it's really good, not just for the type of person that you are, it can fit whatever personality type you are, but it's also gonna be something that you can add on your resume, even if it's a failed venture, uh, which hopefully it will never be a failed venture, but taking those risks, making those efforts, it will be a learning opportunity and you will be so much better for it. Yeah, I echo what uh, Terry says, you know, like when we, um, are bringing new members in, you know, when we're reviewing resumes, uh, we're definitely looking for, you know, people who can take the initiative and 
organize groups internally and, uh, you know, uh, whether that's out of school or, you know, an organization. So in this case, if they had the, the experience of organizing ERG, I mean, that jumps out at me as being, okay, well, this person, you know, is really, really driven and they're mission driven. And that's what a lot of, at least startups, uh, uh, you know, people look for. Um, and, you know, so uh, things to leave here with. So, so it, my business philosophy is that I think business is probably one of the best platforms to use capital to drive for positive change. And I think, you know, like Zoe said earlier, um, you know, uh, successful business nowadays can retain talent that, that and attract talent that, that really take that seriously, right? They want to join an organization because, you know, they want to drive for positive change. Um, and so, um, having having uh ergs and you know having you know we're considering kind of like a the i role even at our our you know kind of like 20 person team stage uh where it seems like too early for something like this you know i don't think so i think it's important to to kind of sow the seed from the from the very beginning so i think you know for other startup leaders um you know uh, and i'm still learning a lot more about this uh you know my my intention is to really formalize it even you know, one example I'm thinking about is maybe empowering people who uh, are taking these initiatives as like have, giving a financial bonus to them, right? Why not? Because it, it does, it is an additional responsibility outside of your, your, your core, um, I guess, functions at a company, right? But whatever you do actually benefits the company because you can attract talent and people are more productive, people are happier. So why not uh, be uh, compensated, uh, you know, to do that financially? And so, uh, so this conversation is inspiring a lot of good ideas uh, in me. So thank you. Thank you for, for the inclusion here. I loved that, Jake, the idea of giving a, a bonus to, to people that are leading ERGs or doing a lot of good work. That's awesome. Really good idea. Um, I think my, my parting words would be simply that ERGs can have tremendous impact. Um, and so from that perspective, I think they're worthwhile. Um, the proposal, actually our POC committee get a, gave a proposal to our leadership team yesterday and it was so inspiring because they came to the table with really good ideas. They wanted um, to add more diversity, equity and inclusion questions to our screening and interview process so that there's, we already have some, but they want more, um, which I'm, I love that they're thinking so holistically about how do we create positive change across the organization. Um, and so, you know, I think that what I took away from their proposal was just that they care so deeply about making our company a better place. And that's amazing and powerful and that um, a really good way to convince leadership that might be opposed or confused or not understand the role um, that their employees care enough about the company to want to put this effort in. Um, and I think that's really, really powerful. And I, I hope more leaders like, are like you, Jake, and like the leader of our company, and Carrie, yours too, who I think understand that there is so much value that can be brought to make the company a better place and improve the culture. Thank you so much for that, Zoe. Um, and, and thank you to all of our panelists uh, for just inspiring not only i'm sure cole and i but the other attendees that are here and it seems like you all inspired each other um you know in closing one of the things is that is important to mention about ergs is that they are you know jake as, as i i heard the background uh just a young child and it reminded me that ergs are you know right now i think because of socially the topic is around people of color it's around women it's around the bipoc uh, converse, you know, um, community, it's really, you know, they extend far beyond that. There can be ERG groups for parents, um, you know, for religion or faith-based groups. And so, you know, don't be afraid to think outside of the box to advocate for those groups, whatever they may be uh, within your company. And here at latech.org, um, you know, we hope to be a holistic partner for you in helping you to be a resource for launching your own ERG groups or other diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. And Cole, uh, L, Sean, and myself, uh, Wendy, uh, JD, Sammy, our entire team, and I have to shout them out because we're really small, but do a lot of work. Um, and also Alicia, 
um, we we really want to make sure that we can provide the resources so as cole mentioned earlier please don't hesitate to reach out to us we're always here for the la tech community and the uh, tech community at large and so we don't want to be bound by geography but la is is in our backyard it's our home so this is where we have to start so um, with that, I'll turn it back over to uh, Cole and Elle. And if you all have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll make sure that this is available for you. Um, and we hope to send out an ERG resource kind of starter toolkit for you all as well after the, this panel. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Um, thank you so much to Zoe, to Jake, to Carrie. Um, it was really insightful, a conversation that could go on for hours, I'm sure. And we want to keep the conversation going. So we're going to make sure this stays in the airwaves. We'll put it out there for everyone to see. Please share it. Um, please help us amplify the conversation. And everyone will stay connected in our ambassador dialogue. Um, we have more programs to come. The forum will continue. And we thank you so much for adding your perspectives, your time, um, really just your passions and investing it into this space. It means a lot. And it is, a, and it, it is appreciated and it will make a difference. Um, I want to be respectful of time. I know we're a few minutes over. So we'll go ahead and close. Um, reach out if you need anything. And latech.org is a resource. It is a hub. Um, we like to think of it as a bit of a family. So we're very happy to have you. Can't wait for more work to come. Um, you know, like we always say, in gratitude and in action, uh, thank you for your time. From Elle, from Tyler, from myself, from Sean, from everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Have a good one. Thanks, team.